Hello everyone! Today I have a story for you. I'm going to read the story and I recommend that you listen to it at least two times. Hello, this is English with Archie. I'm Archie. Nice to see you again. I hope you're doing well. Let's get started. A woman was standing in the woods, uncertain of what to do. There was a family dining inside the cabin. That was unexpected. She would try to find another. She retraced her steps between the trees, moving silently. Not even the hedgehog in the grass took notice of her. Approaching a log cabin, circling it stealthily, once she was convinced that no one was inside, she climbed through the open window. People were so trusting, lucky for her. Rummaging through the cupboards, she seized some chocolate bars, shoving one in her mouth in a frenzy. A gold ballpoint pen, a coin purse with some antique coins in it, could be of value, and a digital camera. Behind her, she noticed the creak of a floorboard, but she knew the weight of a human foot, and so she didn't turn around. In the bedroom, there was a silver necklace with a shiny looking pendant, a pair of headphones and a 50 pound note. A motor rumbled by, and seconds later, headlights lit her hair through the bedroom window. She ducked out of the way, panting. <sighs> okay, that had taken her by surprise. Car doors slammed. And sweating, she saw her exit through the living room, to the kitchen, and out the same window. But a shadow approached the cabin door. Now, she scurried silently. The latch turned. She clambered on the worktop, and as she did so, a knife clattered on the floor. The door opened. What's that? Outside, she pressed her back against the wooden slats, breathing furiously. When the door closed, she ran to the trees. The homeowners burst outside. You go that way, I'll go here. But she was in her territory now. She ran. So, that's our story, just a very small extract. Now we're going to have a look at some of the vocabulary that I've used in that story. And after that, I'm going to read it again for you so you can listen again. So, the first key word here, which I'm sure you'll know, but it is a little more unusual and maybe you don't use it, is dining. If we're dining, it means we're having dinner. Though it's not necessarily dinner, it could also be lunch as well. It just means having a meal together at a table, at a dining table. To dine. So I dine, that means I have a meal. And it also is similar to the word diner. In America, you have diners. They're like cafes, places that you have on the highway that you can stop at and you can have a meal or you can have some coffee. So when we say the word dining, it usually has a kind of idea of a family or a group of people around the table having a nice meal if you're dining. You could say if you invite a friend over, um, if you're a little formal, you could say we're dining at seven o'clock. Then we have retrace. If you retrace your steps, it means you've already gone in one direction and then you're going back the same way. So maybe especially in a situation where you're lost or you don't know how to get back to where you started, you have to retrace your steps to be able to do that. If you're in a snowy place, or if you're in a desert and there's a sand a storm, it might be very difficult then to retrace your steps because you can't see your footprints. Then we have a hedgehog, so this is an animal, a hedgehog. Um, I presume it's called a hedgehog because they often like hanging around in hedges but I'm not 100% sure. But a hedgehog is a very cute little animal with lots and lots and lots of spikes on its back. And they're very common in the UK. It's an animal you can see fairly regularly in the countryside. And we can see that the hedgehog 
took no notice of her. So that's another way of saying the hedgehog didn't notice her. Or maybe it did notice her, but it wasn't really interested, so it didn't pay any attention. It's a little bit more like paying attention. If you don't take any notice of something, sometimes you do know it happens, but you just ignore it because you're not interested. So this hedgehog seems to be very used to this lady walking through the woods very silently, and it isn't bothered. It isn't bothered by that, so it took no notice of her. Then she approaches a log cabin. A log cabin is a cabin made out of wood, made out of big logs. So they have those round log shapes. And she circles it stealthily. So first of all, she circles it. That means to move around it in a circle. So she's moving around it, looking in, seeing if there's anyone inside. And she's doing it stealthily, stealthily, stealth stealthily, stealthily. If you do something stealthily, it means you're doing it very, very quietly. Like if you're a thief, then you might move stealthily because you don't want other people to hear you. So you wear soft fabric shoes, or you don't wear any shoes, and you move really carefully like that. So you're moving stealthily. Once she was convinced that no one was inside, she climbed through the open window convinced. If you're convinced, that means you're absolutely certain. 100% you know that something is true. So she was absolutely certain that there was no one in the house. Rummaging through the cupboards. If you rummage through something, it means looking at a fast place, usually with one or both of your hands doing like this, usually you don't have maybe much time or you really want to find something, so you're just looking through like this. Maybe you're knocking everything out of the way or mixing everything up when you do that. If you, for example, have a big bag and you can't find your keys in it, you have to rummage in your bag to get them. You don't know exactly where they are, you don't see them and just pick them up. You're moving your hand around, where are they, where are they, trying to feel for everything in the bag. So she was rummaging through the cupboards, trying to quickly find anything that was maybe of value to her. She seized some chocolate bars. She seized some chocolate bars. So if you seize something, you take it really, really quickly, You're taking it with a lot of force as well. And then she shoved one in her mouth in a frenzy. If you shove a person, you're pushing them. If she shoves a Mars bar or a chocolate bar in her mouth like this, she's doing it really, um, without much care, she's just shoving it in, she's not eating a little bit, she's putting the whole thing in her mouth in a frenzy. If something happens in a frenzy, it's like without any kind of control. For example, in a classroom, maybe the kids are running around in a frenzy, like they're so excited and full of energy and they're making a total mess running around the room. So if you shove that chocolate bar in a frenzy, it's like you're not even um, taking any care, you're not even thinking about it, she's maybe starving, maybe that's why. Or maybe she's just desperate to get into the house and get out of the house as quickly as she can, so she does everything in a frenzy. So she then takes a coin purse, so this is one of those ones that clip at the top, and they're usually fabric or leather, uh, like a little bag with a metal clasp on the top that you can click shut or open up, and you usually you use them for coins. Maybe they're a little bit old-fashioned these days. So in there, she finds some antique coins. So if something's antique, it means it's older than 100 years. So if something's less than 100 years old, then it's not antique. And once it's over 100 years old, it's antique. And we usually use this for objects, things like tables, chairs, furniture, um, paintings, pictures, clocks, stuff like that. If it's older than 100 years and it's antique, and then obviously, it can have a higher value because of that. Behind her, she noticed the creak of a floorboard. So I have kind of floorboards. Well, actually I have laminate. Laminate is like not floorboards, it's like sheets of wood. It's kind of a bit more pretend. Um, but anyway, she had floor, floorboards in this log cabin and she heard one of them creak. So we've had this in stories before. When something creaks, it makes almost a cracking sound and you get it with floorboards. You might get it with a radiator, you might get it with a window, you might get it with um, a wooden wall or something. So usually things made of wood, when they're rubbing together, they can make a creaking sound. 
And then we've got that word, wait. Now wait, I'm sure you know this word. However, I just want to stop on it a second because it's one of those words in English that has a ridiculous spelling that relates in no way to the pronunciation. So it's a silent G, silent H. Really, if I was going to write that in a phonetic way, it would be like the word way, W-A-Y, with a T on the end, wait. Just so you know, because it's easy to look at that word and think, how do you say that, all those letters? I mean, you basically don't say most of them, and it's just wait, wait. Then she finds a silver necklace with a shiny looking pendant. A pendant is the part that we have at the bottom of the necklace. So a stone, uh, usually it's a stone, or it could be a piece of metal shaped into a heart or shaped into an oval or something like that. So that's the pendant. It's the thing that the chain of the necklace carries, the most beautiful part, the pendant. And this is really similar to Italian, like pendere. I'm sure that's a word in Italian, and it means to hang. Or like in an old, antique grandfather clock. A grandfather clock, which is one of those really tall ones, with a pendulum. Then a pendulum is the part which moves like that. So again, that hangs and it swings, so that's a pendulum. And this is a pendant on a necklace which hangs from the neck, and it's pendant. So, and is related to them. And then we have a £50 note. I don't know in your country how big notes get, but in the UK, I don't think we have a bigger than a £50 note. I mean, there might be a £100 note, but I've never experienced a £100 note. I think I've had a £150 note in my life, um, because you don't really get them very often, you know. <laughs> they don't really give you them very often. You know, you get 20s, you get 10s, you get 5s. But £50 note, you know, we have, but you don't get very often. £100, I don't think that exists, but I could be wrong. I just think I'm probably not the kind of person that gets £100 notes and walks around with £100 notes, unfortunately. I don't know about in your country, what's the biggest one? Be kind of curious to know, to be honest. Our next one is a motor rumbled by, like the sound of a motor of a car, it can rumble. And the other thing that can rumble is your stomach. When you're hungry, your stomach can rumble. Um, the other way that we use the word rumble is a lot of um, old video games in the past, where there were fighting games, before they start the fight, instead of saying three, two, one, go, they'd say, ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. And that really isn't to do with the sound, that just meant fight, but who knows? But yeah, rumble, basically, is this low sound that a motor of a car might make, or even your stomach when you're hungry. So that's a rumble. You can say, my tummy's rumbling. My tummy's rumbling. So it's, it's making a sound. It's saying, feed me. So that's rumble. So here, the motor of a car starts rumbling, and she suddenly hears it and thinks, oh no. And seconds later, headlights hit her hair. So the headlights are the two front lights of the car, the headlights. She ducked. She ducked out of the way. If we duck, it means doing that. So if maybe someone kicks a football at you and you don't know what to do, then maybe you duck. Or someone throws something at you, you duck. Or you're trying to hide from someone, you might duck out of the uh, sight of the window so no one can see you. Then she's panting, panting. If you're panting, it means you're out of breath. You're going <sighs> So your dog as well. Dogs often pant because they don't have pores in their skin, right? So to keep their temperature um, cool, they have to pant to keep cool. But here she's just scared and surprised, so she's panting out of fear and surprise. Car doors slammed. Slam is a word that we often use when talking about closing a door. If you close a door um, with a lot of force, then you slam it. If you're really angry, like you have an argument with someone, then you might slam the door um, when you walk out of the room just to be dramatic. And probably, okay, I remember 
in my family, okay, this happened, maybe a, a family argument when we're like young, uh, and the typical thing is, oh, don't slam the door, you know? <laughs> but when we're talking about a car door, it doesn't necessarily mean we're angry because car doors are very heavy and so they slam and they make a loud noise anyway. So car doors slammed it just suggests that she's heard the car doors close loudly. A shadow approached the cabin door, so she can see this shadow. Perhaps there's a pane of glass in the cabin front door, and maybe it's a frosted glass, so they can't see her, but she can see a shadow just sitting on top of that glass, so she knows someone's about to come in. Then we have scurried. Scurried is like a quick movement, especially when we're talking about something that's very light and small, like an insect. We use this word very often to describe movements of insects, like a spider can scurry, because it's very, very quick, it's light-footed, I mean, you don't hear spiders moving, but maybe um, scurrying does usually have a sound, like maybe if it's like a pretty big insect, or, or it could be like a mouse or a rat or something could scurry, because then you can hear the sound of it, its legs moving across the floor. So that would be scurrying. So here she's scurrying over to the kitchen, so really, really quickly moving, making some sounds of her feet and her hands moving on the wooden floor. So she's scurrying away. The latch turned. So the latch is that little bit in a lock that goes out and in. And sometimes you can put them in, you can click that little thing and the latch will stay in but here the latch is turning, so he's turning, the person who's coming in the door is turning it, and it's going in, so she knows the door's about to be opened. She clambered on the worktop. Clamber means climb. It just sounds a little bit less elegant, the way you're climbing, you're clambering onto something. Like you might clamber onto a rock. When you clamber, you're not doing it with that much confidence. You're doing it like you're really on your knees and on your hands. So climbing would suggest we're kind of going up like this, whereas clambering is usually more like this, so we're on our hands and knees trying to get onto something, clambering. So she clambered onto the worktop, and the worktop is that surface in the kitchen that we prepare food on. So that bit that goes above your oven, above your fridge, above your cupboards, and that you can prepare stuff on. But as she did so, as she did so, as she did so means as she clambered on the worktop, as she did so, it's like a way of not repeating as she clambered on the worktop, because we've already said that. So you, instead you can say, as she did so, a knife clattered on the floor. So it's another unusual word. When something clatters, it's making a real noisy sound, especially a plate or a knife or something like that. If we drop it on the floor, it's going to clatter. Yeah, okay, so that clatters on the floor, basically. Outside, she pressed her back against the wooden slats. Slats are these wooden things that slot into each other, and you might have on the wall of a wooden cabin. Or again, on my floor, I don't have normal floorboards. I have ones that are like slats, so they, they fit into each other. You can also call the pieces of wood on wooden blinds slats. So they're basically generally pieces of wood which are quite thin and in the case of a house or in the case of a floor they usually fit together and then she's breathing furiously so furiously obviously normally means angry if you're furious you're really angry but we can sometimes use it as an adverb not to mean angry like here it doesn't mean angry it's not she was breathing furiously it just means that she was breathing a lot she was breathing very heavily so Again, it's like panting. She was breathing furiously. So she do something furiously. It can mean also doing it really fast. Like I run around the room furiously. So it might mean that I'm doing it really, really fast and not necessarily that I'm angry. If I gave you another example, it could be like he was writing his story furiously. So here it's probably not angry. It's probably really, really, really quickly. Then we've got the homeowner's burst outside. So a homeowner is another way of saying a person who owns a house or a property. So the homeowners burst outside. If something bursts, it's moving really fast. 
So if you shoot a gun, then the bullet will burst out of the gun. Or if someone bursts into a room, it means they've opened the door really quickly. Maybe they think someone's in the room and they want to find them. So here the homeowners burst outside, it means they open the door really quickly because they know that there's someone that's just been in the house and they want to find them, so they burst outside. But she was in her territory now. Her territory. Your territory is your place. The place that you own, the place that you belong to. So my cats, I have three cats and they're very territorial. So our garden is their territory. Um, and our territory, so they don't mind seeing us in the garden. But if they see another cat that's come from another garden, then they get really mad. Um, they're very territorial, and they, they will make their fur really big, they will hiss, <laughs> and uh, they will be ready to fight the other cat, because that is their territory. And here we're saying this was her territory now. So she feels very confident and comfortable in this place, and she knows it very well. So basically, there's no chance for them to now find her or catch her because she knows where to go, she knows where to hide. It's her territory. Okay, so I'm gonna read you the story one more time. If you haven't listened with subtitles, maybe try them now. If you have already tried with subtitles, then maybe take them away. So, a woman was standing in the woods uncertain of what to do. There was a family dining inside the cabin. That was unexpected. She would try to find another. She retraced her steps between the trees, moving silently. Not even the hedgehog in the grass took notice of her. Approaching a log cabin, circling it stealthily, once she was convinced that no one was inside, she climbed through the open window. People were so trusting. Lucky for her. Rummaging through the cupboards, she seized some chocolate bars, shoving one in her mouth in a frenzy. A gold ballpoint pen, a coin purse with some antique coins in it, could be of value, and a digital camera. Behind her, she noticed the creak of a floorboard but she knew the weight of a human foot, and so she didn't turn around. In the bedroom, there was a silver necklace with a shiny looking pendant, a pair of headphones and a 50 pound note. A motor rumbled by and seconds later, headlights hit her hair through the bedroom window. She ducked out of the way, panting, okay, that had taken her by surprise. Car doors slammed, and sweating, she saw her exit, through the living room, to the kitchen, and out the same window. But a shadow approached the cabin door. Now, she scurried silently, the latch turned, and she clambered on the worktop, and as she did so, a knife clattered on the floor. The door opened. What's that? Outside, she pressed her back against the wooden slats, breathing furiously. When the door closed, she ran to the trees. The homeowners burst outside. You go that way, I'll go here. But she was in her territory now. She ran. So, that's the end of our story. Well, I hope you liked it, guys. I recommend that you listen to it one or two more times if you still don't feel very confident with it. And here on the screen, I have some questions for you. So these are ones you can think about. You could also write me your answer to this question so we can have a talk, have a chat about it. I'd like to hear your interpretations and ideas about the story. And remember to like this video, subscribe and recommend it to any of your friends who are also learning English. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again soon. So thanks very much everyone. Bye.